Today I'd like to show you this bomb rack that I've restored. This is called the MA-4 bomb rack. It's still made today. The model was originally produced in the 1950s and 1960s. This particular model is a trainer and it was made in the 1960s. You can see from the cutaway this would be used to train bomb loaders, technicians, pilots on how a bomb rack worked. These bomb racks have had many different uses over the years. The most recent being in the C-130. The C-130 can release cargo out its rear at certain times and that cargo releasing all at once can be held horizontally by one of these bomb racks. Also this can hold things like the fuel tank on a T-38. It can also be used for various research and development efforts for the Air Force as well. In order to use this bomb rack, a bomb loader would come over, put two different D-rings or key rings into these clips here. There would be these small plungers that would come out and hold the clips. And then the bomb loader would pull on this tab and be able to lock it in place around the bomb. These levers will come out and they would lock onto the shackle of the bomb and the bomb would be loaded. Watch the levers as I pull. One of the main components required to run this bomb rack is the proper power supply. So I ended up finding a power supply on eBay. It is a 28 volt power supply just like aircraft electronics would be. And then on the end of this power supply I've placed just a standard Limo connector. It's a two pin, although you probably cannot see. And I've drilled out a hole on the bottom of this bomb rack that I built where I can plug the Limo into on the bottom of the frame. I built the entire frame from scratch for these I used a standard router bit that is used for 90 degree cuts. I squeezed together some oak and then I cut it to size using a sander and a bandsaw. And then I bored the center out to put the harness through. On the back side is where all the magic happens. So at first I have 28 volts coming in and then the ground coming back through the black. This red wire, the 28 volts, goes through a voltage divider. The voltage divider comes out to the white, which is 12 volts. That 12 volts gets distributed over to LEDs that show the status of the bomb rack. And then the 28 volts goes over to these switches. These switches control uh, pins that are on the bomb rack itself. And then these pins allow you to select the type of munition that you want to drop or it can make the bomb null and make it drop so that it doesn't explode. Here are the two pins that you would connect strings that come off the bomb into and these strings on the end of them there would be this long oblong kind of oval key ring that would get shoved up inside and then these pins would hold it so that you could either choose to disarm the bomb when you drop it or you could choose certain munitions. Right here is the manual release. This whole mechanism works off this cog right here and this pole, when the cog moves, the paw moves up and then the bomb rack releases. I'll show you that real quick just based on the manual release. Watch the pole. It moved up. Now when that pole moves up, there are contacts in here. These contacts touch and activate when the bomb rack is armed or released and then it gives the pilot feedback as to whether the bomb actually dropped or not. And these contacts are what controls the LEDs up here. So now I have the power supply plugged in. I'm going to actually plug it in the bomb rack itself from the Limo connector. And when I do that, an LED lights up. 
This LED is green indicating that the bomb is in the release state. Now it is hard to do this at the same time of holding the camera, but as soon as I cock it, we see that it's gone to the red state and my drop switch has gone red. Now I'll show you, I can activate these pins and those allow me to select whether the bomb is released null or not. And lastly, I can release the bomb itself from the main bomb drop. Thanks for watching.